Yo, Bytor back with the final episode of Season 1. Let me go through my daily ritual before showing you the content. If you are a recurrent subscriber, welcome back to the channel. I truly appreciate you and the trust you have put in us. If you are a new subscriber, welcome. You now have a whole season to study and go through. This season has been about hammering home the concept of how capacitors work and how they get charged. Of course, we still have some more advanced topics planned for Season 2 that include both active and passive filters. For Season 3, we have some very hardware-specific questions about LDOs, diodes, and debugging, so stay tuned. Our team is actively interviewing, both as interviewers and interviewees, to bring you the best latest and most up-to-date content here on this channel. So, let's dive into the content for today. Now, don't feel bad if you couldn't answer the question right away. It's fine. After all, that's why we're here. If you have watched our previous episodes, you will realize that this circuit is very, very similar to one we already studied. The link to that video is down below. The key difference is that in the other circuit, we used an ideal current source. This one has an ideal voltage source. So let's take a look at how to answer this question. We know that capacitors get charged through a current, never through a voltage. So, we can write the equation I equals C dV dt. If we rework that equation, we already know that the voltage across the capacitor will be equal to 1 over C times the integral of the current times time. Now, in this case, we actually have an ideal voltage source, but we don't have any resistor, we have nothing, so where is the current actually coming from? More importantly, how does the capacitor get charged? In this situation, we need to be able to think abstractly. We know that ideal voltage sources can deliver an infinite amount of current while still maintaining their voltage. In this situation, we can start sketching the voltage across the capacitor. Initially, when the voltage source is zero, the voltage across the capacitor will also be zero. Same thing with the current. If the voltage source is zero, the current will be zero. Now, during this step, this is the key moment right here. Remember that the voltage source and the capacitor are both in parallel. So the voltage drop across them must be the same because we already saw on the previous video that whenever we have two elements in parallel, any elements, their voltage drop should be exactly the same. So when that voltage rises from zero to whatever voltage, let's call it 5 volts, that means that the voltage drop across the capacitor plates should also follow what the voltage source is doing. Infinitely fast. But you must be asking yourself, if it tracks it infinitely fast, how does the current look like? That's the tricky part of the question. The current will spike to an infinite value to charge that capacitor. That means that the current will look like an impulse response. It's infinitesimally small but it has an infinite height. That is how the capacitor gets charged immediately. Notice the abstract thinking here. While we don't see an element for current to flow, we have to think that somehow that voltage source is providing the current to charge the capacitor. And so this sketch would look something like this. Again, this is a very silly question, but it does come up, again, primarily on startups, because they're interested on how you think 
and the understanding that you might have.